what a disappointment, guys. What a disappointment. Disappointed! Originally, I had one video about the Nebula and putting the Nebula in the Tadpole 3-inch, but I split them. So if you want to see the notes about the Tadpole 3-inch and how the Nebula fits in there, go watch that video. And if you want to hear notes about the Nebula, this is the right one. So I did actually consult with Bardwell before putting this video out. He reached out to me after he saw some comments I put on and I had been taking notes from other people about their experiences with the Nebula camera. It matched mine exactly, but to Bardwell's credit, he went a step further and wanted to confirm, compare footage uh, before he said any statements. So I'm not sure what he's gonna say about the Nebula. But what I'm saying about it is that it's terrible. And after consulting with multiple other people that have tried it, I'm pretty sure that I don't just have a bad unit. This is the results unit can expect. So just a fair warning before you put your money down, check out the notes. Thanks. John here, guys. And today we're talking about the Cadix Nebula, the nano size camera system for the DJI FPV system. And I'm really suggesting you watch this video if you are intending to buy this thing. I have seen a couple of the reviews, the notes that have been put out. They're talking about the image quality, but there are a lot of other things that you really need to know before you buy this thing. I don't see a lot of people talking about the huge downsides of this thing, which are not image quality related in my opinion. And had I known those, I may not have chosen this myself so this is what you're going to need to know what are the compromises that come with getting this system as opposed to the cadex vista system now there's three different sizes of dji units that you can use now there is the dji air unit which is the giant one that's like 50 something grams then there is the cadex vista unit which i have installed in this three inch bangot now, the main reason I wanted this Nebula was because I wanted to add the DJI system onto this Armitan 3-inch. This is the space grade version that I've had on the channel. This is such an amazing special formula. These 1106 motors on these 3-inch props just fly so amazingly well. And I had been flying around. I designed a custom mount for this to be able to hold the Insta360 GO camera. And then I thought to myself, you know what? The DJI system quality is really similar to that Insta360. So could I, you know, keep the weight fairly similar by eliminating that external camera, not having to worry about it, and just record straight to my goggles, and then not having a camera hanging off on top that could get potentially damaged? Uh, that was very attractive to me. And this system uses the uh nano size 14 millimeter camera the cadex nebula comes in this box it still says vista kit so they must have changed the name sometime in the development process the package it comes in is very much the same as a regular vista it comes with the same antenna this is the same style like rush makes that has the hard um, section up here that makes it easier for mounting this ufl and then the center of the actual unit is identical to the Vista. The only difference is the camera itself, which is a nano size camera, meaning it's 14 millimeters across, very tiny. Now it does sit a little bit proud. Um, so you can see even with the camera protection cage of this tadpole, it's right at the front. This is a kind of a nice large lens that they put on this thing, which is very nice. Here we can compare it to a Runcam Racer uh, nano camera, and you can see that the lens does sit a mil or two more out, but not as much as you might think. Uh, but you can also look at the way that it structures here, it's very wide on the end. If you look at them head on, you can kind of see that right there. So the camera is very much designed and the lens like a traditional nano size camera. It just has some different components in the center of it, which make it digital compatible. And by building up this system versus this, these are both three inch quads. This is 90, about 91 grams or this is about 191 grams. So hundred gram difference between these two three inches, both on the DJI system. And that's what I really wanted to accomplish. 
because this flies so good, it has so much power, so much flight, it has crossfire on board with the mini Immortal T antenna back there. And so I didn't see any downsides. I, I saw some of what the image looked like. People were complaining that it's 16 by nine, though it is 16 by nine, not four by three like the others. That didn't seem to bother me. I don't mind. I used to fly 16 by cameras on my Omway Commanders, which were 16 by nine back in the day. No problem. It was milky, cloudy when pointing at the sun, but it had good night footage. I was willing to take that compromise, get a little bit more low light um, abilities. And you know what? The milky into the sun, that can be an aesthetic choice. That can be, you know, a lot of uh, film <laughs> people like to add those type of effects. Um, so I really wasn't concerned with that too much either. But what you do need to concern be concerned about is the latency and the screen tearing and the ghosting and the choppiness and overall quality of this. It is just not close to being on par with the other DJI system products at all. You know, the advertised latency of this is supposed to be between DJI's low latency um, mode and their high quality mode. Um, so about 32 milliseconds, which is in between those. This, for me, I was getting way more latency than um, the high quality mode, like significantly more. It was to the point where if I wasn't very familiar with how this quad flies, and I wasn't very familiar with exactly where I was flying, it would have been almost unflyable. The latency was very jarring. Now, I am a more sensitive to latency type pilot. Um, I noted that like when I reviewed the Falcor original version or on like some of those early run cam splits where you did have some latency in the video feed, I'm very sensitive to that. Um, so we'll, you know, some people may be less sensitive, but this felt like more latency than either of those systems. Much more latency than the high quality mode because the high quality mode for me in DJI does have more latency than the low latency mode. But to me, it's very flyable for freestyle, just not for racing. This, I don't see how you could fly anything faster than like a small three inch on this. I would not want to fly a four inch or a five inch or a six inch with this camera. The latency is just too much. If you get speeds greater than what this thing flies, that latency is going to be problematic. In addition to the latency, the feed didn't cut out, but it sort of redrew itself. You know, if you ever get like a bad, um, laggy internet connection when you're watching a video and the screen kind of redraws, you'll see like the top third sort of redraw, then the middle, then the, then the bottom. Some people call that ghosting. Some people call that screen tearing. Whatever you want to call it, I experienced it fairly frequently. And it happened not super fast. I mean, if I was flying faster, it could have potentially definitely led to a crash. That is extremely disappointing. That's extremely problematic. I'm okay with the actual quality of the image, although it is pretty bad, but I would have probably suffered through it. I was really hoping that the overall image quality of this thing was gonna be closer to what you see out of the Vista, and it's really not. And that's very disappointing because you only save about four grams by going to this setup. Now you do get more versatility because you can put it into frames like this. So it will fit in here just barely. You have to make a few modifications, um, but like, man, what a disappointment, guys. What a disappointment this thing is. I mean, I kind of wish I just didn't buy it. So if, if you are the kind of person that's sensitive to latency, now, I am running the dipole at the back, but Ferrari has tested that extensively. You can go watch some of his DJI videos where he is running a dipole just like that. I don't think that's accounting for the negative image quality on this thing. Um, that screen tearing is, seems to be very unique to this particular system. And so this just is not ready for prime time. I don't know if there's if this is an issue with hardware, if there's gonna be an update that can fix some of this. The camera quality could be better. I wish the bit rate was a little bit higher, so it would be a little, I mean, it's like, why even take the analog system off of this? And I probably am just gonna throw the Phoenix Nano 2 back on here because that camera is so good for analog. And it's like, you're really starting to 
get lower and closer to that analog and this is like that gray zone where yes the phoenix 2 is maybe still not as good as the lower quality of this but like you don't have the latency issues and that makes it very difficult to fly it took the fun out of flying this thing and this is one of my funnest quads i've ever built in a long time and it was just nerve-wracking thinking you know am i going to crash is it going to cut out the screen tearing thing like if i did, was not familiar with that place it would have been game over so in addition to the 16 by 9 if you're not used to in addition to the milky cloudy coloration when you're pointing anywhere close to the sun or a bright light source you need to be aware of the super high latency the screen tearing ghosting and uh i just i just don't know if it's worth it you know saving 25 bucks on this versus the vista there are other frames that are going to be coming out that are going to be able to accommodate this DJI, you know, you need to step in and like check Caddx because this product is not ready for prime time in my opinion. What do you think in the comments? Have you tried this system out? Do you have any other notes? Have you been able to get a higher bit rate by manipulating these things? There's not really a lot of things to manipulate. You are limited to 60 frames per second and that's part of the latency issue here. On the Vista and on the Air unit, it is 120 frames per second. So you're cutting that essentially in half. And if you know anybody that's a gamer, when you cut your frame rate in half, you're gonna have issues, especially when you're doing it with a lot of fast motion like we do when we're flying anything. Thanks guys.